realized they took the word snake and changed it to essential? And people started buying the oils again? So the fact that people say the murder in the Watts crime was an occult? While I don't agree that the murders were ritualistic, I do agree that the murder in the Watts crime was indeed an occult. in your life that make a difference makes a huge difference and removing the toxic people the people who are just always so negative um, not that I don't have friends that are still negative um, you know but I think you have to remove the negativity out of your life to make yourself better and happier oh you're so sweet Tony I love you too I know you like I know a lot of people but even just the couple of conversations you and I have had, I mean, you're truly a blessing in my life and I'm so glad to have you as well. Disrupts everything from the creators. One legacy of our recent past has been the change in the religious life of the country. Some people have dropped out, others have been born again, and millions have joined new religions. No one is sure just how many new religions there are. It could be as many as 3,000 groups with more than 3 million members. Many parents and a lot of ex-members of these groups claim they are not in fact religions, but cults, destructive cults that deceptively recruit members, practice techniques of mind control, and whose real aim is to get wealth and power for themselves. This is Neeks, in my newscasting voice, reporting to you live that the Watts family murders have been alleged to be cult affiliated, and that the murderer themselves was a member of a cult. Viewers at home right now thinking, what? Neeks? We're never watching Neeks. She's crazy. She's gone off the handle. She's another conspiracy theory channel. Or are MLMs actually cults? And the Watts family, mommy and daddy, both members of a cult. It's true, my friends. You can't make the up.
So I think to understand the murders and to truly understand the characters from the Watts family, we really have to put on our cult glasses. So everyone's like, holy hell, how did she get away with this on Facebook? Well, I mean, I think it was because the people viewing it in real time were actually just other members of the cult. I mean, how often do we see it that current members of the cult speak out against the atrocities or the child abuse going on inside of it? I don't think that happens often, nor do I think it really happens at all. I'm gonna have to go with Agent Coder on this one and say, that never happens. So really, with our cult glasses, it's not as shocking, is it? Typically, it's the kids that have been abused through these methods of advertisement or with MLM parents or with other types of parents obsessed with an organization and dragging their children into the mud and through the mud in the process. Only after they grow up do we hear about what really happened because they've left the cult by then, hopefully, if they've been able to not be overtaken by the constant repetitive nature of the beast. And like typical cults, most people they're surrounded by are other MLMers. A world where toxic positivity is not only the regular, but it's literally coached, preached, and rewarded. The illusion of friends, transactionary and performative friendships, and alluded to as family. You don't just get friends, you get family. What does that sound like? <laughs> oh yeah, that part. Her one simple product can change your life, but it has for me. And, um, it's made my life better. Joels, yeah, a couple of you are twitching for your vials right now. Don't you dare. Don't you. Listen, if you're into it, I get it. It's fun to believe in magic. I get it. But it can be everything. It can't fix everything. If you're not familiar, I'll fill you in. It's this small cult. <laughs> that thinks whatever your life problem is can be fixed by their magic gypsy oil. That's all. You just hear it in the pitch and you're like, okay, so I just put this on my neck and so I'm clear. Okay, that'll be good for my skin and my dog's anxiety. Okay. Oh, it's not supported anywhere in the medical community? Perfect. Oh, and it's a pyramid scheme. Keeps getting better had a meltdown the other day I kept it cool in public like drained we get um, we lose our patience my daughter had a meltdown today in Target like literally full-on fledged her first meltdown in public and um, it was during you know uh, lunchtime nap time she was not feeling well and she had a full-on meltdown and I just kept my cool I was just like this calm and collect and um, it's funny because I had like a million people staring at me because my kid was having a meltdown and my patience was still there. I still had patience to just take it in and to let her do her thing. Um, she went to bed when she got home, but she did her thing and I was good. I felt good. I, you know, didn't lose my cool. I didn't scream. I didn't yell. Um, Pre-thrive, I probably would have. I mean... You know, it's amazing how much, um, as Chris will tell you, my patience is so much better since I started Heels thriving. They're never perfect. They're all scattered. My thoughts are always so scattered because I get so nervous on these calls still or live calls that I just lose my train of thought sometimes. And then, of course, the news feed coming up and you guys are talking and all Shemaine that. Shemaine was nervous at first on camera. She wasn't the social butterfly that we would see later. One of the biggest arguments about the Watts crime is whether Shanann was a shark in the native land of her built and maintained shark tank, or was she a guppy dressed as a shark swimming around and idolizing the big shiny teeth? That is the illusion of success and money. And Has it generally been the experience of people here who have family members in a cult? or as they call them, a new age religion, that once they become associated with that group, that their personality changes? All I know is from my sister before she went in, there was a wide range of emotions that she had, which I thought were very healthy and very good. You know, and since she's been in, there's not that range. And it's, you know, it's 
Well, I've heard people say there's a wall, but for my sister it was almost this like iceberg effect. She wasn't real. And I guess that's what I don't like about the cults, is that you take a person who is alive and, and, a, and a real and a person, and it's like they're a robot now. Really, really had to stop thinking about what people thought, because most of my network were, were professionals. Like, my, I went to college, got to I felt like my network was going to think, oh my gosh, what did Most of my network were, were professionals. Like my, I went to college, got degree, multiple degrees. I, I was, um, I felt like my network was going to think, "Oh my gosh, what is she doing?" Um, and I had to get to the point where I'm so confident in this. I don't care if they talk about me, but I'm also really excited. I'm so excited. Super excited. So lucky and so excited. I'm super excited. Super excited, thing, and I'm super excited. One other thing, Shannon says she is super excited for justice today. You are one in your vocabulary. You bet. Florida, Hawaii. I like the even better. People beside me, and it's all about helping them. This is a full circle. Everybody went. Neeks Peaks Challenge. Come up with a nice sentence behind the word, you people. <laughs> Good luck. You can do it, but it won't sound natural. You people are very beautiful today. You people, wow, truly do possess all of my love. You people, like the video now, guys. Language. Listen out for it. As I listened to Shanann's leader, she told Shanann, and anyone listening to her, that their comfort zone is downright uncomfortable. She dramatically, and then ends it with a right, and everyone just laughs and agrees, but I don't get it, because my comfort zone's pretty damn comfy. It has all my shit. I'm chillin', I'm off of work, I have a new video lined up for my viewers. Dinner's done, belly's full, comfort zone. Yeah, my comfort zone's great. It never gets uncomfortable. Although I do concede that it is good to get out of your comfort zone, but here's the problem. Whenever you're told to convert your own comfort zone, your home, into an uncomfortable live stage where mom is stressed out if anything is out of place because life is a commercial and life is on a live stage. And these guys, they were a little bit before their times with the lives, really. Back in 2016, whenever Shanann kind of started going live the most, it wasn't really that popular at that point in time. A lot of people weren't really using it yet. Live was a brand new thing. Other than on news stations or some talk show, something that even actors who are in cinema and who are viewed on a public stage even when they just go out in public, these guys are nervous to go live on talk shows or on interviews. That's a really nerve-wracking thing, even for performers. So when you get into, like, contracts and people or companies that make you go live, essentially forcing that stage on you. And then you have Shanann, who has been taught that she's helping people by removing them from that comfort zone. And to boot, taught that she's going to help them succeed this way, that this is the way to success. And that in fact, if you stay in that comfort zone, your quote unquote business is doomed to fail. Drilled into the downline's head all the time. And the toxic positivity prevents the participants from ever receiving any type of sympathy for the downfalls of the market. So it presents itself as a scheme that can't fail. And if you're fucking it up, well, you gotta figure out how to get out of your comfort zone and stop fucking up. No, seriously, stop fucking it up. Man, damn it. Ooh, 
So, was Shanana Shark or Guppy? Leave your comment and let me know what you think. She certainly did used to be way more nervous on camera and in fact communicated that she still shakes while she's doing lives. You can definitely see Watts being shaky and some of the ones that his wife is obviously kind of forcing on him. You'll also notice that he's typically chewing gum whenever he's in the lives. I think it kind of makes him not do that don't know what to do with my hands feeling like Ricky Bobby. It's a Talladega Night reference. I think that Shanann was also prime for the taking for something like this. Just think about it. So basically these guys are a bomb together because we have a female who is absolutely 10,000% in the category of need to flex my beauty online and I need to be validated through that platform. Plus, she has a boyfriend who doesn't express these types of things very often, or at least I'd, I highly suspect he didn't. I doubt it. I doubt he did. So the online validation that we've already seen manifesting in this woman at least a year or more online before she ever even meets Chris. And then we have her pairing off with someone who who is not great at validation and explanation itself, right? Explaining his feelings to someone is very difficult. And I don't think that's just because he doesn't have feelings or whatever people say. I do see him as someone who has a lot of trouble expressing something. So at some point, she was maybe a caterpillar who was forcing herself out of the cocoon comfort zone and emerged as someone who appeared to be a butterfly. But it is a part of her cult that she joins training that you will only fail as the caterpillar. The caterpillar has no option to succeed. And I think like for many narcissists and narcissistic type personalities and disorders similar to that cluster of dysfunction, I believe that Shanann suffered a lot of shame about the reality of what she was taught was only her own failure. She was taught Thrive was the perfect product and it wasn't Thrive. It wasn't that Thrive sucked. It was that she sucked. And that sucks. Sorry. Many perceive Shanann only to be a predator. But according to Shanann and according to her brother, there was a time where she certainly was a guppy amongst a world where, with all due respect, she had a few quirks with her speech. It's somewhat pejorative now to call it a speech impediment. But to me, guys, let's be honest. If there are people willing to make fun of her post-mortem about the quirk, impediment, whatever you'd like to call it, obviously, people in real life did that too. And f middle school and high school is brutal. So I absolutely believe Shanann did get picked on. And if we're thinking about a girl who at some point was the stage director who hung out with the teacher more than the students, which we'll talk about another day, then we do have to think about a bully who at one point was a guppy in a shark tank with a sticky note attached saying, Target. No doubt in my mind that this girl was picked on at a young age and maybe even older. In part of Frankie's interview, typical to what we often see with the family, he brings up a medical issue and he relates it to having defended Shanann from some bullies. But I guess also conversely, he doesn't describe a girl being bullied, but sort of describes her as a popular girl that all the boys wanted to date, but also, oddly enough, describes going to prom with her and being the envy of Shanann's class of boys. So again, I ask you, what's your take on it? It's not hard for me to imagine that she got picked on. I think she probably did. I'm not sure if he's saving face with the whole popular girl description. Maybe the dudes didn't typically pick on her, but I'm sure the girls did. And that sucks, but we know how life works, right? Now in return, what we have is a control freak who joined a cult. And now their home is a stage. And as shy as her spouse is, and as meek as the spouse she married was, she now wants him to be 
a thriving couple, a power couple, a boss couple. She wants him to be able to publicly speak. And I think as we can see with her close-ups on another Chris, that she admired his exhibitionism, a thing her husband lacked almost completely. Same as exhibitionism, she now wants him to grow some balls and stand up to the family he stood up to in the beginning of their relationship. And for those who think she was all predator, she definitely embodied it in a lot of her letter, which people claim made her seem like she wanted to change. But even in the shadow of saying she would work things out with his family, you can hear the hints of her bringing up that... They had gotten through this before in the beginning. A note to her wanting to spark those memories. Fueled in the early days of their relationship probably by oxytocin and new love. Or the prospect there too. Now you have to be an exhibitionist. You have to want to go on live. Now you need to man up. You need some exhibitionism. Some stage presence if you will. To go through what I, I don't know. It, it's just hard. Hey Jamie. Um, I'd never want my girls to go through what I went through growing up because it was hard, you know, um, it was hard. I would have busted his ass in North Carolina yeah. and got it out of him, that's for sure. <laughs> no matter how big he got, I ain't scared of nobody, yeah. especially for my sister. You know how many <laughs> fights I've gotten to for my sister, how many times I got beat up because of my sister. <laughs> you know, guys are... Men in school, you know, with the old, their pins, they're actually pins, now stickers. Uh -huh. They're poking around a school bus, they're poking her. And I'm like, so leave my sister a bunch of black boys. I was like, leave, leave her now alone, you know? She, she said, stop. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're going to be, you're going to do something about it. And they like grabbed all their books and they like hit it me on the head. That's probably why I got a neck problem. <laughs> and they just stomped me out on the bus right then and there. The bus uh -huh. driver, they didn't do nothing. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I didn't care. I said, I'd do anything. Yeah. Yeah. My sister, it's my only sister. And uh, she took me to her senior prom because I didn't have a day. You know who does that? Oh, really? Senior prom? Yeah. yeah. And she she was loved by many men. The guys, any guy wouldn't want to be with her. And she, they were upset the day that she took me and yeah. But I was proud, you know? yeah. And she cool. always got me girls to dance with. It's all her older girlfriends and things. So I was like, <laughs> I had it made growing yeah. up. Yeah. About so much success. You can't even endeavor to tell about the problems you need empathy for. It sounds like a sad and lonely existence. And then I wonder, did she ever want to turn around? Did she ever think, I've got to get out? Was she ever talked into staying? Did she want to make that commercial? Bad enough to just keep pretending until, until when, until what? I guess it'll always be a mystery. I know that there was a cult here. Also profound for me was going through the Thrive of Palooza commercials and seeing Shanann's so-called friends, actually her upline, the girls that she envied and emulated, found quite a few pieces where friends and the Thrive ladies are pushing up on Chris, the same way they'd kind of do on the other Chris. And maybe Shanann really was jealous because though she continues to make Christina Meacham the center and subject of the film that she has actively rolling, Chris made sure he dodged Meacham's attempts to shoulder hang on him. Swoop! <laughs>
said miss him with all that wrath a couple of the ladies though have some cute shots with them and there are some shots where you can see him performing for shenan obviously looking for her approval and attempting to please her but these two definitely made a pretty picture one wonders where they would have been cast in the thrive of palooza commercial maybe island side kicking it on the boat i don't know but i think she wanted in there sounded like one of her closest friends from back home and who actually happened to have gotten moved to colorado with her husband who was in the military whom you would think she would have picked up a great friendship with once they were again in the same location however that friend said that she wasn't as into thrive and seems to convey that they didn't have as much contact afterwards another one bites the dust and it's also unethical to sell a product under the umbrella of a small business or supporting moms when really you're filling the pockets of billionaires same as ever the vast majority of people who have found this crime in some mainstream media believes the watch show a viewer recently in a very intelligent comment reminded me that shenan was stage manager in her high school drama class yeah how's that for ironic another viewer reminded me that hollywood can actually be like a cult itself she was describing the mommy dearest situation the famous hollywood mother as hollywood would name it mommy dearest joan crawford had died a tragic death and many people as my viewer states urged her not to come out with her book after her mother's death and even so and even after describing the atrocities inside of the home there are still people who call her a spoiled brat merely complaining and outright lying about her mom because they prefer the notion of the beautiful mother who adopted beautiful children that she wanted to adore it is a much better story i guess lots of family members describe having a robot take over their family member but here we've not seen anyone speak out about shenan using the same language as the rest of her friends did while selling the same product online and in fact infamously was quoted stating their favorite thing to say so excited that shenan was super excited for justice that day wow i gotta give it to frank though just think about it as much as people say that they are tired of hearing super excited while they're going through shenan's lives imagine that after your life is gone and everyone you know or loved was gone too everyone you know and supposedly had loved for some of my viewers there you go give a little bit to everyone <laughs> and you're sitting there and that's what dad says to you the very last words he says are so the two words that you probably could have went the rest of your life ever hearing repeated so excited burn it may seem cheesy on the surface but deep down that shit cut deep frank went for the jugular and no one could really blame him
They do, but they're taken. You gotta get I can go next at 13. I can push up. Door, <laughs> as, you, as, as you record this. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like that beach? <laughs> At least you were pretty. I cannot, I cannot with you guys, I cannot. Oh, I just do it. If the car wasn't in front of us, I wasn't expecting the car to be <laughs> You guys missed it! I'm not doing it! You guys you missed it. For two oh wait, Josh is not done. Oh, Josh is done. Turn right, right onto Caesar each other. <laughs> way, then turn right onto the California. Are you good? How does it taste, Bella? Good. It's good. Do you like it? Mm. More? You want more? Oh, it's coming out, it's coming out. And the looks of kids being put to work by their parents change, but the will work for food, moral always stays the same. Ironic to the moral of this little get up is that kids today often are labored through the work of film. The irony comes in with the use of film enacting the first child labor laws. When artists decided to put moving pictures to work, alongside artfully crafted photos of children laboring at work and with moving pictures of workers leaving factories and mills. Oftentimes, more kids coming and going to work than the adults, but an adult handler always nearby to make sure that the kid stays on point, much as we see these parents doing in their collection of promotions for the corporation they're affiliated with. Day. If you are not happy, you're not going to make your kids happy. You're not going to make your spouse happy. You're not going to make your family happy because you're miserable. And I was. And people don't get it because I was such a good faker.